Good day, grade 10s, and welcome to your first life orientation lesson. My name is Sibusi Somasombuka, aka the Swaggy School Teacher. So in today's lesson, we're going to have a look at study skills, such important skills for us to learn in order for us to start enjoying studying and so that we can get the A's that we work hard to get. All right, we and our teachers work hard to get those A's, right? Cool. So, you know, study skills um, or adapting a study skill really has to do with also what you like and who you are. You know, what I like about life orientation is that it teaches us to be aware of who we are, what our interests and our abilities and our strengths are, so that we're able to adapt all of that into our own life. Because, you know, nothing should be difficult in life if we enjoy it, all right? So, um, you know, we did an interesting study when I was in school in psychology, and um, a lecturer made us notice that um, when, People who are extroverted, now this is in you knowing yourself, people who are extroverted actually study better uh, closer to the window of the library where they're able to see what is happening outside and they're sensitized by the stimulus or closer to the entrance of the library because they can see people walking in and out. Um, so that they, they all stimulated by that, by what they see. And then introverted people actually study better by being in a closed room in a uh, cubicle where they're by themselves. All right. And that also has to do with their personalities as well. So you need to be able to know what kind of person you are and what sort of uh, study style or method will, you will be able to apply to make sure that you enjoy your studying. All right, at the end of today's lesson, you will be able to improve your listening, reading, and concentration skills, increase your concentration and memory skills, and learn how to organize and manage your time well. Now, this is a skill that, you know, we don't even have to mention it, but time management skills are such great skills that you not only apply in your studies, but also in your social life and in the world of work as well. Now, let's have a look at new words that we're learning today. Study strategies, study styles, and study skills. Now, study strategies are plans or methods to the way you study. Now, how do you study? Now, think about it. Um, do you use dual coding, which is using words and pictures to learn new information? Do you make infographic summaries, like such as um, mind maps with pictures? Uh, do you make comic strips, etc.? Or do you use retrieval practice where you try and recall everything that you've learned uh, and you've closed your textbooks to try and remember some of the stuff that you've learned? Do you, uh, do you use spaced out practice where you not only cram and scramble through your notes the night before, um, you know, cram, pass and forget. A lot of you are guilty of that. I was also once guilty of it. Uh, or do you space out your work and study weeks in advance in order for you to retrieve the information and even get a chance to ask your teachers the questions as well to the difficult um, content? And then study styles are particular ways of learning new information. So how do you learn new information? Uh, do you need to go on a field trip to better understand what, you, what you've been taught in class? Uh, do you learn better by listening or hearing things or by seeing things um, as they are? And then the study, uh, study skills, pardon me, are your abilities to listen, read, understand, concentrate, remember, and organize your learning material and manage your studying time. It is a way in which you tackle the process of organizing and taking in new information. So what skills do you use um, and how do you study? Please let me know in the comment section. All right, so the most widely accepted uh, model of learning styles is called the VARC model, which you guys learned about in grade eight. And the V, it's an acronym. The V stands for visual. The A stands for oral or auditory. The R stands for reading or writing. And I know writing has a W. <laughs> and then we've got K, uh, which is kinesthetic, which is learners that uh, learn best by moving around. So in brief, visual learners learn best by seeing things. Uh, so perhaps through pictures, uh, watching video clips uh, of how things work. And in auditory, these learners learn best by hearing information. Um, so right now, I am um, 
you know, this video lesson is accommodating more of the kids that are visual and auditory because you guys are not only seeing what you're learning, but you're also hearing me at the same time. And then we've got reading and writing. Those learners read, uh, learn best by reading and writing. And then we've got kinesthetic learners, uh, learners who learn best by moving around and, and doing things. So this could be, could be by doing an experiment that you've learned about. You know, we learn about theories and we, we do experiments in class, whether it's dissecting a kidney, um, or going, you know, when you're learning about evolution, going to the cradle of humankind and you learn about human evolution uh, from Australopithecus to Homo sapiens um, and, you know, uh, feeling and touching all the different artifacts to understand how hunter gatherers uh, got their food, you know, something interesting like that. All right. So um, how do you guys prepare for your test and exam? Let me know in the comment section. I want to know how you guys prepare for your exams. Do you study the night before? Do you study weeks in advance? Do you study in an area on your, uh, on your bed? Do you study in a closed room? How do you guys prepare for your, uh, for your exams? Do you write down a study timetable? Let me know in the comment section and let's all learn from each other. And then the next question I'm asking you that you need to answer in the comment section is how do you organize your studying and manage your time? You know, that's also something that we battle with. You know, we scrambled through our notes just the night before because we're like, oh, I'm writing this test tomorrow or I only just found out about it, you know, from Tebo who texted me just now. But we all know the teacher let us know about the assignment due date or the test date way in advance. All right. So let me know. Cool. Let's look at how you can improve your listening, reading and con uh, comprehension skills. Now, listening skills, um, active listening is not just hearing what is said. It is thinking about what is said. If you listen actively, you will understand and remember more. Guys, when you are in class and your teacher is teaching you inf uh, new information, it's really up to you. And it's more beneficial for you to actually listen to what they're saying and to the lecture or to the lesson. So what are they showing you? What is their gesture? How do they, you know, uh, say certain things? Um, and that helps with listening quite a lot. And, you know, if you don't know, the word listen actually has the same letters as silence. So you actually need to be quiet as well while you listen in class. Listen carefully to what is said and listen with your ears, but also uh, with your eyes as well. Watch what the speaker or the speakers are saying and how they are talking and make notes and write down only the keywords. Keep asking yourself your questions or these questions. And you know, these questions are also questions that could pop up in exams and tests as well. Ask the speaker, and this is so important, ask the speaker questions and in your own words, repeat what the speaker has said to check if uh, you have understood the content better. You know, that's the most uh, best. The best thing about um, content learning is the fact that we are able to have the speaker right in front of us, and we're able to ask them questions if we don't understand the work. So take advantage of that. Now let's have a look at reading and comprehension skills. You know, um, there's different ways in which you can read, and we, you know, we read. At, for enjoyment and we read for learning as well. And we, you know, we come across new words and, you know, it improves and increases our vocabulary so we can also write better. So reading is so important, but also with reading, you want to comprehend, to understand what you're reading. And it says, yeah, good reading habits will help you find information you need and to understand and remember what you have read. Now there are two different ways in which you can read or, you know, um, or just before you study, and that is scanning and skimming through your work. Scanning is when you move your eyes quickly over the reading material until you find the piece of information you are looking for. And then skimming, which goes hand in hand with scanning as well, is when you quickly look at the headings and at the main ideas in each paragraph so you can get what the main idea or the basic idea of the content in which you're learning is about. So I'm going to do a bit of skimming and scanning right now with my grade 10 business studies um, textbook in front of me and I'm going to scan. So I'm scanning through the material. The heading here is business management, leadership and organizational structure. So it says, um, what I'm scanning here is that it's defining what management is and how it's the process in which uh, guides individuals in a business. So that's the information that I'm getting from this. 
And then it also talks about leadership and it says that leadership is different from management and it is more people orientated. All right, this, I got all this information by just skimming, by just scanning, sorry, through the words um, uh, in the paragraphs. And then sk skimming, sorry, is when you look through the headings. So I'm going to quickly go through the headings in the textbook. And right here, I've got management and leadership and organizational structure. So both these headings are giving me an idea as to what, what I'm going to read about. All this information is all about. And then the next bullet point says here that you need to read more slowly than you usually do because you're able to pick up on more information when you do so. Read out loud for better understanding. Ask yourself questions about what you're reading. You know, be curious. Have a curious mind when you study. And make notes and underline keywords and look up new words in a dictionary. You know, like I said, it improves and uh, um, it makes our vocabulary more when we read and we look up new words as well. Read small sections at a time and make sure you do understand what you're reading and don't skip difficult parts. And when you do come across difficult parts, you then uh, consult with your teacher as well or somebody who can help you with your studying. Now, let's have a look at some concentration skills. You know, um, part of listening is concentrating because sometimes when you, I mean, we hear things because we've got ears and our ears um, give us the sense of hearing information or hearing different stimulus in, in the environment. But when we concentrate, it means that we're taking in the information. We are uh, being particular in the information in which we're learning and we're able to take on parts of that information and we're able to assimilate that information in our minds as well. So concentration skills, it says here, you need to find a quiet place such as a library or a quiet room in the house. Switch off your cell phone and your TV because that can be really, really distracting. Put up a do not disturb sign, you know, without being rude to your parents, you know, because um, you are still in their house. If you're feeling nervous, take deep breaths and stretch. You know, it's so important for you in your study breaks that you stretch and you take deep breaths. You know, a, a breathing exercise that I do when I am faced with a, with a question that is very difficult in an exam is that I just take 30 seconds to just breathe in and out with my nose very slowly and trying to, you know, pick up a sound that is very far away from me and also a sound that is very close to me. You know, that helps me to, to get my mind back in check uh, because, you know, sometimes the nerves can get to us uh, in the exam. You know, when, you, when, you're, when you're nervous and you're a wreck and you're unable to answer the questions correctly. And then it says, yeah, choose the subjects that you, uh, that you study, um, ch sorry, change the subjects that you study uh, every uh, one or two hours. You know, uh, when you change topics, you, you change sub uh, sections in which you are studying the content, it helps you better as well because, you, you know, we get bored by just studying the same thing all over and over again. So you want to be able to take those breaks as well. And then take regular breaks. I always say that if you're studying for longer than 15 minutes at a time, then you're not studying anymore. You need to be able to take short, regular short breaks in which you take your mind off studying and uh, also not take your mind off and uh, derail, but you know, just to walk around the house, stretch, go drink some water, um, reply to a text quickly, but make sure that you don't take forever in answering your texts. And then the last part here says, give yourself a reward when you have finished a section. You know, we like positive reinforcements. You know, when we get a 80% or a 90% for a test, we want to be given a, a golden star by our teachers. We want to get merits. We want uh, our parents to say, well done when we've done well. So you also need to positively reinforce yourself by giving yourself a reward after a long time or a long period of studying as well. And it could be by having your favorite chocolate bar or, um, you know, watching uh, your favorite movie just for a bit, you know, in between your, your long breaks, uh, etc. All right, now let's have a look at some brain food, some food that is good for our brain and helping us concentrate better. And that is fatty fish. And we know that that is good with omega-3. Um, we've got blueberries, turmeric, broccoli, um, pumpkin seeds, dark chocolate, nuts, oranges, eggs and green tea. Um, so a lot of you may say, oh, ew, that is not nice food. That is not fun food. But you can always go on YouTube and check out how you can make really good meals. Uh, and you can include some of these um, 
meals or food types in your meals so that you can get the right nutrients for your brain as well. And you know, um, you really want to have this food in the period in which you're studying because it's really, really good for your brain as well. All right, and then let's have a look at how you can improve your memory skills. It says here, first understand what you need to remember. Our teachers always give us hints on what is the most important things in the exam. So take note of that and first understand what it is that you need to remember about the text in which you're reading. Make summaries and learn from them. Practice repeating the summaries to yourself when you are, and when you are walking or standing in queues while, while bathing or while bathing. So make flashcards uh, and make summaries of the work that you've done. And don't just only use the summaries that your teachers make, but also use summaries that you've made yourself because, you know, you, you've simplified the work to your own understanding. And it says, yeah, the next one, close your eyes and make a picture of what you're trying to remember. So visualize what you're trying to, uh, what you're learning. Uh, and I always say that if you're able to make a connection of what you're learning now to the information that you already know, um, then you're building up on knowledge. Um, you know, more like scaffolding. And then learn actively by standing up and walking around while uh, you try to remember new information, tell someone what you have learned. So, you know, whether it's explaining the work to your friends or, you know, making voice notes or speaking to yourself in the mirror, uh, playing teacher, you know, there's different ways of explaining the work to your parents as well. And they, they'll be super impressed when they uh, can see you um, be able to tell them new information as well. And then make up acronyms or mnemonics. Um, for example, to help you remember uh, how to spell rhythm, I used to battle with rhythm and rhyme and, you know, these words. And how I remembered it was um, I made an acronym or mnemonic for myself, and it was rhythm helps your two hips move. All right, so the R was for rhythm, the word rhythm. The H was for the word helps. The Y was for the word your. T was for the word to H, hips, M, move. So that's how I remembered how to spell rhythm. And then remember, uh, to remember the order in which to do calculations, um, I sucked at maths. I hope you don't. <laughs> um, do you know, you, we learn about bot maths in, in grade, in, in, in school when we, we're doing uh, multiplications or calculations rather. And uh, how I remembered bot maths was bless my dear Aunt Sally. And B was for brackets, M for, was for multiplication, D was for division, A was for addition, and S for subtraction. So you can, you know, you can use this different ways. You know, when you learn different concepts in your studying, uh, you can create some mnemonic as well. And another one that I like to use when I learned the four management tasks in grade eight was planning, organizing, leading, and control. And I made an acronym or uh, mnemonic, Balissa only likes coffee. And each letter of the first um, letter of the mnemonic is um, the letter of either of the four management tasks, uh, which is uh, planning, organizing, leading, and controlling. So this was a fun way in which I used to study and, you know, you can make mnemonics out of the craziest things out there. But if as long as it helps you to remember the information better. And then it says, yeah, make up your own questions and try to answer them the next day in a mock test or, ex or an exam. So, you know, in this way, you're, you're practicing what you're learning and it helps you to remember the information a lot better. Because, you know, the, you know, the way in which you... Uh, um, memorize your work or to see if you've memorized your work is by constantly repeating what you have learned because it makes the retrieval of information a lot easier for you all right and then another way in which i try and help to um you know improve my memory my memory my memory skills as well as my concentration skills is by meditating because meditating really helps with the willpower of our brain and helps us you know to have more self-control to be disciplined to manage our stress well and to focus as well so i've got a meditation session that we're going to have right now it's going to be about two minutes um and in the background you're going to hear it's my colleague nicole economo who's an educational psychologist and she's giving us different breathing exercises so i hope re i really hope that you guys enjoy this meditation uh, session and i'll see you guys in about two minutes all right moment to honor the feelings yet ask yourself how am i feeling you are 
ask that question. I'm going to click my fingers and after the click, we will go into a moment of silence and you can just be, just be with yourself. And ask yourself, how am I feeling today? Before we start, let's take two deep breaths again. During the moment of silence, you can just do soft belly breathing. Here we go. Two deep breaths. Inhale through the nose. so gently come out of that moment of silence. Okay. You can be with yourself and check in with your feelings and honor them. All right, great sense. I really hope that you guys enjoyed that and that you guys will um, keep uh, meditating to help you concentrate better and to help you uh, remember information a lot, lot better. I feel a lot rejuvenated right now and uh, you know, I can almost get my day started. Um, but uh, let's continue with our lesson. All right, so let's have a look at how you can organize and manage your time well. Remember I told you that time management skills are very imperative skills to have. Um, and you know, you don't want to find yourself in a very difficult position where you're not pressurized to study because you won't enjoy studying at all. All right, so draw up a study timetable or schedule. And um, you know, even with the timetable that you get, your school timetable that you get from school, um, draw up a schedule. You know, how are you going to do your um, activities that you do after school, such as uh, maybe you do music or you sing or you play sports or you um, do voluntary work. So how do you improve or include all of those things in your study schedule as well? It's so important for you to include all of that, even if you literally plan out your day as it goes. But also at the same time, when you do drop your study timetable, include breaks, and also allow time for when there's a bit of a hiccup during the day. But if you manage and drop a study timetable, there really shouldn't be a, a mess up or um, a glitch in your, in, in your day. All right, and then the next one says you need to balance your time with the uh, to rest and to have fun. So, you know, studying does not only mean that you cannot do your normal activities that you do for leisure, such as exercising or walking or uh, whatever it is that you guys do for spare time or watching a movie. Um, you, if you include this in your study timetable, um, then you um, will do well. Because you not just want to live a life of just being a student and not being able to connect with all the other aspects of your life, such as your social well-being, your emotional well-being, your religious well-being, spirituality, uh, and even social well-being as well. So you want to include all of those things and just live a normal life, right? All right. So you need to be able to manage just to balance your time well. So include sports in your in in your study timetable as well, and have a balanced lifestyle. And then it says, yeah, take reg regular short breaks. Make time for these breaks in your schedule. So allocate time in which you're going to take short breaks in between your study sessions. Remember I said that you cannot study for longer than 40 to 50 minutes at a go. Um, you need to be able to take those five, 10 minute breaks to just walk around, have some water, make a quick snack, uh, etc. And obviously also having those longer breaks where you're um, taking a break for like an hour from your studying uh, so that you need to include all of this in your uh, study plan as well. 
And then try to spend more time on subjects that you battle with. You know, this works out with prioritizing your time. Um, so you prioritize the difficult subjects, but also at the same time, also giving enough time for your easier subjects so that you can learn all the information that you need to learn in order to ace those exams. And then decide what time of the day uh, you have the most energy and are able to concentrate best. Some people study better early in the morning or in the evening. I'm a nocturnal person. I do most of my work during the night, even though when my job requires me to do work during the day. But when I'm studying, I, 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 I would rather uh, take, you know, um, the day to sort of relax and to sleep and to energize myself and to recuperate. And then during the night, then I will study better because there's less distractions. You know, I'm also on social media like you guys. And, you know, our WhatsApps are always buzzing and we're always chatting and we're always watching people's TikTok videos. So if you know that there's less distractions and you can concentrate better at night or in the morning, uh, you need to decide which one works for you. And then keep all things that help you with studying in one place, such as your dictionary, your pens, your highlighters, scrap paper. So this falls part in organizing yourself so you want to study in a room that is clear clean organized really well and you're able if you're looking for a pen you know where to find it. if you're looking for highlights you know where to find it even your notes you know where to find those as well you don't want to call Sufiso or Tebojo in the middle of your studying session which could also take up a lot of time and you're asking them to take pictures of you know different parts of the work because you didn't paste in your work or you can't find your notes you know you want to organize all of that before you start studying as well so that your studying becomes a effective and efficient as well. And then keep away from things that will distract you from studying, such as TV, radio, cell phones, or noisy people. You know, you want to study in an area with, which will help you to concentrate a lot better. And like I said, social media, our cell phones are really big distractions in our lives. And you know, they, they really um, contribute to us being counterproductive. And that's, what, that's not what we want to be. We want to be productive and make sure that we study smartly and study hard so that we're able to ace our exams. All right, so I hope you guys understand what it means to draw up a study timetable. And I think in the next lesson, I will show you how you can, you know, sort of draw up your own study timetable. But there's a lot of templates uh, on the internet on how you can do all of that stuff. All right, now let's have a look at some skills that you need to learn about managing your time well. Setting goals. Remember, your goals need to be specific. What is it that you want to achieve? They need to be um, measurable. So in when do you want to achieve this and how long? All right, they need to be attainable. So is it something that you can actually achieve? You know, they need to be realistic, you know, realistic to yourself, realistic to your strengths, your abilities, all right? Also recognizing what your weaknesses are. And then they also need to, you also need to put time to your goals. Remember that we teach you about smart goals and life orientation. So, you know, when you set goals, then you know what you want to achieve and you work towards that vision or that dream. You know, that's that's what goal setting is about. And it's so important for you to set your goals. Determine your priorities. Uh, know what is more important, what is less important, or maybe not less important, but what is not as important as the most important thing. <laughs> Uh, so you need to determine what your priorities are. So obviously in the period in which you're studying, studying is more important than being with your friends or chatting on WhatsApp, on your WhatsApp groups, or, you know, watching things that are not going to benefit your studying. So you need to prioritize your time quite well. And then plan your time, create a time schedule. Again, it's so important. Even if you draw it up and you have it large and colorful and big in your studying room, or you uh, have it on your phone. I have my study timetable on my phone. And every time I do something, I give myself a thumbs up, you know, the thumbs up emoji uh, to show that I've done something. And also that makes me feel good as well. So, you know, taking off your to-do list as well. And then keep to your time schedule. Now, this requires a lot of discipline. Um, you need to be able to be disciplined when you uh, create a study timetable and when you carry out the tasks in the study timetable so that you're able to accomplish everything that you wanted to accomplish, especially in your studying, so that you're able to ace that exam because nothing comes easy grade 10. Again, um, it's not going to be easy, but it will be certainly be worth it. I'm going to say that again because I didn't say it properly. It's not going to be easy, but it will certainly be worth it. So start now. Start now. And I've got a cute little picture of a cute little baby there. And it says the expert in anything 
was once a beginner. So you're not alone. You're not alone in this dark time. Everybody has gone through it. And every successful person has to go through a moment in which they have to sort of prepare uh, so that they get the results that they get. So don't think that you're alone. Don't think studying is daunting. You can really, really make it fun for yourself. And then in the next lesson, we're going to look at the different study methods, note-taking, mind mapping, and summaries, as well as how to construct an essay because you know we write essays in all our different subjects especially in our languages as well and then uh thank you for tuning in um it's our first lesson i hope that you enjoyed it um if you you guys can follow me on instagram and it, that is swaggy school teacher the google classroom code is um to the to the google classroom it's on oops my phone should have been off. <laughs> uh, the Google Classroom code is on the screen right there in front of you. If you guys want to be able to get uh, access to all the slides that I have in front of you now, as well as my email address, if you have any queries or questions to the work that we're learning, um, ask me any questions and I'll be able to respond back to you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in and I will see you guys in the next lesson.